Hey YouTube, welcome to my root strategy guide video. It's、uh, been a while since I've uploaded my previous one, so I'm really looking forward to this. So this time we're going to be talking about Woodland Alliance. I think Woodland Alliance is the strongest faction to play in a public match, simply because there's still a lot of new players. In many of the games, without proper match making system, and Woodland Alliance is one of those factions that、uh, more often than not, people don't know how to play against it, and in many times,、uh, the mistakes that they make actually help you towards your victory condition. Before we start,、uh, make sure to turn on the subtitles. And, you know, sometimes if I make mistake in the video, I tend to correct it in the subtitle. So just make sure you do that. Let's talk about base configuration first. I think having a good base configuration is the most important victory condition for Woodland Alliance in any game. And the whole gameplay kind of revolves around your base. How do you get an optimal base early in the game? How do you protect these spaces, and how do you use this space to get point and to some extent even playing favorite cards? So, what is a good base configuration? It should be determined by the number of unique locations one or a set of two bases link to, and these locations should not be a base itself. Nor should it be the castle of the cat. As we all know, that、uh, you cannot put down a token at the cat's castle. So I have a personal tier list of this base configuration. I think with a total of three unique locations being linked to, it's suboptimal. And、um, as you can see.、Uh, The bottom right, a rabbit base plus the center mouse base. As appealing as this configuration is, there's a total, a total of three unique locations these bases link to, not counting the base itself. And I think a base configuration that links to four unique locations is quite acceptable. In most games, that is most likely going to be the configuration you're getting. And I think if you have this configuration, the game is quite winnable. Of course, it does require to you to play、uh, a pretty decent game. And of course, a base a combination that links to five unique locations is extremely nice.、Um, most likely, it's revolved around you know having that center fox location, plus, for example, the. Uh, nine o'clock mouse location, and lastly the god tier base combination.、Uh, depending on where the cat put his castle, most likely is going to be that、uh, center fox and center mouse location.、Um, if you get this combination, I would say you have a eighty percent chance or even more of winning this game. Simply because if the players are bad enough to even let you get this base combination, they're probably not good enough to stop you from winning anyways. And also keep in mind that on top of all the tiers I mentioned, if the two base configuration is not interconnected with each other, I tend to drop the tier by at least half a tier. Simply because、uh, if your two bases are not interconnected,、uh, despite the fact that you're going to get more path. Uh, out, you are very easily、um, punishable simply because a lot of good players who knows how to play against Woodland Alliance in mid games they tend to kind of just park a whole bunch of uh, uh, warriors at your base so that they rule the clearing and some of them even park their warriors with an ambush card.、Uh, makes it very hard for you to、uh, redistribute your warriors across the two bases if they're not interconnected. Simply because you got nowhere to go, right? Imagine if the two bases interconnect. At least, if they only rule one base, you can move the ones to the other one because you rule the other one, right? So if they're not interconnected, then they're very easily punishable, and the opponent most likely will punish you because it takes them half the effort to do so. 
And here comes the important question: How do you, as early as possible, get a very decent base combination? And I think the first thing you want to do coming into a game is to do some assessment on what leader that you picked and what、uh, vagabond was chosen as the hero. Generally speaking, a combination of despot. Uh, for Iri and Tinker, is usually a low aggression, low attack combination. So in this case, you're most likely going to be able to give the center fox or the center mouse a shot. But other than that,、uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't try it simply because there are just too many extra attack to spare, and a relatively experienced player is not going to let you have that center location for free. And a lot of times,、uh, based on the turn order. Uh, you might not even be able to put down your、uh, sympathy tokens at these、uh, middle locations because your、uh, opponent would have moved、uh, more than three or three or more warriors into these locations, forcing you to spend this extra support to place that sympathy token. In、uh, most cases, is definitely not worth doing so. And keep in mind, in most cases, where the cat puts the castle on the top right corner, the center rabbit is a horrible location, despite the fact it is in the center, simply because you're missing that one viable path. So this is nothing but a base that links to only two unique locations. So you want to place your tokens in a way I call it、uh, the distraction strategy. The idea here is. You want to put your、uh, the real token you want to actually revolt on in a lesser、uh, aggressive location while putting the other one or two tokens in a more aggressive location. The idea here is to give your opponent、uh, full consensus to attack the、uh, tokens that are more aggressive and leaving your real token that you want to revolt on alone. Another way that this、uh, distraction strategy is helpful is when you have a bad starting hand and a really bad、uh, combination of supporters, and you don't have, let's say,、uh, you know, two of the same colors for、uh, to revolt in the next round. It's actually worth it to take a little bit of a risk, because when your opponent is attacking these distraction tokens,、uh, many times that they don't actually have the matching color, they would have used the matching color. Uh, of that of that token they attacked, so that your supporter comes、uh, from these、uh, the draw pile, and there's actually a relatively、uh, high chance that you're going to end up drawing a card that is the color that you actually want for your revolt next round. So let's say everything went according to plan, got your first base pretty early. Your next goal is kind of、uh, you know get another base, most likely interconnecting base. And the idea is generally the same. You have now have more ways to put out the tokens, right? So you want to be putting out more distraction tokens、uh, while kind of keeping your、um, real token you want to revolt for your second base、um, protected. In the sense that right now you can even put warriors on top of that tokens with greater defense.、Uh, most opponent is going to get swayed away from attacking into it. And especially if you get cards like armors, they're most likely not going to bother with you, and you're going to get your second base more often than not. So I don't really、uh, recommend going for、um, more than two base.、Uh, there's a couple of reasons.、Uh, the first reason is you're going to spread yourself thin, and you're going to get punished if your base is not well defended. You only have a limited of you know ten. Uh, unit to ten meeples to distribute between you know your warriors and your officers, right? So if you got three base,、uh, it's either you don't have enough officers or your base is poorly defended.、So、you're gonna get punished, especially in mid game where you're gonna put a lot of supporters in your pile. It's it's gonna make you very easily punishable. And the other reason I think is actually the most important reason is think about this, right? Let's say you got a kind of like a corner、uh, setup of two bases. You can only put out so many tokens. You're not going to be able to get a lot of tokens out 
you know, because you only have so let's say four or five interconnected spaces, right? So you need to kind of give your opponent the consensus to attack your tokens. So imagine you have a fox base and a rabbit pace, and your opponent most likely they know how to actually play the game. They're going to kind of leave those tokens of the same color alone. It's because they really have better things to do mid game. They're not going to bother with this token. They don't have time for that, right? Unless they really feel like you're going to be dropping a favor of that color, then they can probably you know stop you by attacking one of the two tokens. But in most cases, they're just going to ignore you. So by having a base that's unrevolted of the third color, give your opponent this constant threat of revolt so that they have to attack these tokens. And by them attacking this token of the third color, which you don't have the base on, helps you with two important things. The first thing is they're going to give you more supporters. And that's what we want. Because by having more supporters, you are going to be able to put down sympathy tokens in the locations where your base cannot reach. And the second thing that they enabled is to clear out the space that you have the reach to so that after you put a, out a whole bunch of sympathy token uh, early in, in the bird song in the evening you're going to be able to use your warriors to go to this location that they just cleared out previous round and put down more tokens for more points and every time it's going to be uh, way more point than the previous round because you had more supporters to spread other tokens. But that being said, there are some very rare occasions that you want to have your third base. Uh, sometimes that, you know, uh, that gives you a way better strategic advantage and you're okay with kind of leaving a base on defender and you're really, or you're really trying to stop somebody from winning and there's like a perfect revolt that's not only going to get your point and to stop this guy, yeah, then go ahead. But in most cases, uh, the third base is definitely not necessary. So just a side note, uh, since I already mentioned that briefly, is you always want to put uh, a use the supporter to put tokens to a location you can't reach, and then use the warriors to put on tokens in the uh, location that you can't reach. So I think it's a pretty trivial point uh, to know. So now we've got two bases. And let's talk a little bit about this thing called a warrior to officer distribution. In my opinion, there's three main type of distribution. I call it the defense, the transitional, and the points. For the defense distribution, I, there's three warrior, three warrior, and four officers. So three warrior at each base and four officers. The most likely going to start with this distribution simply because uh, you have that one base with a whole bunch of surplus of warriors and you don't have that many officers so you're gonna kind of get to the stage some point early into the game and this is the time you want to start uh, putting in supporters and uh, you know and your opponent is going to be feeding you a lot of supporters as well so you want to keep your base well defended especially this time you haven't crafted a lot of the uh, defensive card like armors and you won't have that many ambushing hand so yeah so it's good to keep your base well defended and I think during uh, and at some point, you want to go into this thing called transitional distribution. So you, you put some tokens out here and there, and you want to be able to have this one extra uh, recruitable officer in your pool, right? So that's what I call the transitional distribution. So during this distribution, you are also putting in you know more and more uh, cards into your supporters. And uh, this is good because it's you're getting ready for the next stage, but you're still keeping your base relatively well defended. So that's what I call the transitional distribution, which is a distribution of three, two, and five. Three warrior at one base, two warrior at the other base, and five officers. So at some point, let's say you got enough um, uh, supporters and we'll go for that big point push. So most likely you're going to be using all these supporters to put down a whole bunch of tokens in the bird song and in the evening you want to be able to you know move your warrior south for point this is when you move to a two to six but what this allows you to do two warrior two warrior six officer what this allows you to do is to always uh, put out two warriors 
four points and replenish them at your base. So you always have a to-do set up. And by that time is because you you already kind of uh, spend your moment, uh, spend all your uh, uh, supporters. So you're not too worried about losing all of them. And also you probably crafted a lot of defensive card and you have ambush card in your hand. So I think it's relatively okay to uh, leave yourself at like a 2-2-6 two, two, uh, two, two, distribution. Because I think uh, the base is relatively well protected at this point. And you really want to do that big 15 point push at, the, at this point of the game. So I think it's a pretty good setup at this point of the game. So the next topic is to discuss what kind of card to put into your supporter, what kind of card to keep it in your hand, what kind of card to to craft. The general idea is uh, if you're really desperate for uh, for a supporter to revolt because you haven't got a base out yet, um, you should be able to, you should uh, favor putting card in your supporter unless there's a tinker in play. In that case, uh, never never ever put that hammer into the supporter pile you just don't want him to have it also in most cases uh, don't put that sub uh, favor card in your supporter because really uh, you also want to keep that favor card for yourself as well uh, especially when you have a matching or you're going to have a matching base color of that favor card because more often than not people is going to uh, not bother with attacking uh, already revolted color uh, so that it gives you that room to have that very likely have that third token craft that favor card uh, by surprise to get that get you that extra point for a victory uh, the other card you want to craft is maybe sometimes occasionally you know some coin card and if available some teapot card but craft that towards the very late of the game for the extra point push don't craft it too early generally you don't want to craft anything for vagabond too early and some other card, very important, I mentioned before, armor is very, very good for defense. Sometimes you can uh, craft scouting party, but you don't necessarily have to because a lot of players, they review their, uh, reveal their hand when they don't have that card to give you if they attack that token. It's that little uh, horn button beside their icon. So you want to be that better player that keep checking these uh, in the game. And the last thing I want to talk about is don't uh, shy away from attacking. Sometimes you have to because you got, kind of got trapped in your base, right? But sometimes you see a really good opportunity to turmoil a very greedy Yuri where he put like a single card, numbered card in his recruit and he left just one base lying around there. I think uh, sometimes it's worth just, you know, spend a couple of actions to attack. And one thing to note is Oh, if you want to attack, always uh, attack first before putting out the token because sometimes if you get hit by ambush, you lose a wall of warriors. You don't have that extra action to replenish your warriors. So you always want to kind of attack first and uh, put out tokens later. Watch out for your counter. Uh, a couple of your biggest counter is crossbow, uh, card like brutal tactic, uh, owl, Right, this this kind of eats through your uh, gorilla defense because they always deal those guaranteed uh, guaranteed damage. So these are the things that you want to watch out for. So try not to you know uh, piss off the players that is a straight up account hard counter or have the items that can serve as a hard counter to you. And sometimes you're going to have a really bad game. Let's say you have a lot of trouble trying to get your second base. And you're kind of trapped in your first base. I think this is the time to, you know, look for opportunities. Be very patient. You know, keep your one base defended. Putting a lot of support. Be very patient. You could even learn to craft a favor card by surprise, or you can even, you know, take that opportunity when the area goes turmoil, so that you can guarantee a revolt at a very optimal location. Which is kind of what happened with this particular game. If you rewind all the way back to the beginning. I think uh, that's a very good example of how to turn around in a very uh, hard, uh, slow start game. And two extra things. Uh, one thing is that if you have one guy, uh, one meeple in your pool and you do a revolt, and currently the, the game favors uh, assigning this meeple to the officer as opposed to the warrior, at least from my experience that's how it works. The other thing is that uh, 
if let's say a hammer or a very important key card goes into your uh, supporter pile from the draw pile from my experience so far it's uh, when you use up the supporter it's a first in first out sequence so what that means is let's say you already have three fox uh, in your uh, supporter pile and then a fourth fox came in which is the hammer and you don't want to give that to the uh, uh, tinker at least not this early you should be able to safely spend the first three fox supporters without worrying about discarding that uh, hammer card into the uh, discard pile so just a couple of tip or tricks uh, anyways i think that's a wrap uh, for the video i think a lot of people think uh within the alliance is like a really easy really bring dead faction to play but i think that you know uh, by releasing this video i think i want to show that there is definitely uh, some depths and some strategy to this faction and then hopefully this video is helpful for new and experienced uh, Woodland Alliance players to make their game more enjoyable and one last thing is I also stream on Twitch so you know link should be in the description feel free to drop by it would be uh, awesome to interact uh, with my viewers that's it. Goodbye.